Hello and thank you. I am Elena, uh, or Valhalla as most people know me on IFC, and I'm here to talk about uh, Federated Social Networks, the freedom friendly alternative to centralized social networks. Uh, I believe uh, a lot of people here care quite a bit about uh, free software mm, inside Debian, it tends to be uh, quite a thing. And uh, I guess that uh, a number of people here also cares about uh, freedom in general in computing. Uh, so not necessarily what uh, runs on uh, the, the, the non-free software that runs on your computer, but uh, nowadays uh, the non-free software uh, that uh, runs on other people's computer that uh, we have to interact with. Uh, there are a lot of those, uh, and there are a lot of issues caused by those that caused by that lack of freedom. And today, I want to talk about uh, one of them: uh, social networks. They are quite unuseful things. Uh, humans are pretty social animals, and uh, having uh, access to a platform uh, that allows uh, communication. Uh, also remote communication uh, uh, which is accessible to most people on the world is uh, quite a good thing if you also in stretch the definition quite a bit and involve uh, email in the, the concept of a, of a social network uh, you can also say that uh, projects like Debian itself uh, only exist because of social networks uh, the problem is they are also a great way to attract people uh, in, on one platform and try to squeeze every bit of sellable data about them uh, and try to uh, prevent them from uh, leaving the platform uh, uh, in order to squeeze even more. This, uh, well, in some cases, this is just about uh, letting people choose between two brands of um, equivalent uh, pasta or any other po useful, useful product and it wouldn't be a, a big deal but uh, this, uh, this collection of uh, data has already been used in quite a lot of cases uh, to manipulate elections uh, to try to manipulate society and also uh, it has been leaked and uh, in many cases uh, it has uh, been made available available to criminals uh, or to other um, hostile uh, entities such as uh, non-democratic governments uh, or other things and on uh, on this topic of um, social network as a business model uh, one could talk uh, for a long time but uh, I recommend reading uh, uh, the article by Cory Doctorow uh, Zack Empire of Oily Regs which is uh, better said than I could say here and um, basically uh, he claims that um, the, um, the business model of social network is uh, basically one uh, where uh, somebody collects uh, oily rags, things that uh, have uh, very little value on their own, but uh, can have value in uh, huge uh, quantities. But there are also dangers to collect in uh, huge co quantities. Oily rags uh, will catch fire. And uh, uh, the business model of social networks uh, is uh, to let the society uh, support the cost of the danger and uh, a private uh, company uh, get uh, the rewards. Uh, the, the private company sells uh, uh, data or oily regs and gets the money and then uh, when the, the regs uh, catch fire, uh, well, it's somebody else's problem. Uh, society can, uh, can pay for, um, for the firefighting uh, effort. And uh, when uh, people complain that this is uh, not uh, the correct way to run a business, uh, the answer is that uh, it 
wouldn't as otherwise be profitable, which is true because uh, the, the profit from the single bit of data is uh, tiny, so uh, one needs to be able to collect data and have no expense uh, to keep it safe in order to have a profit. Uh, one can uh, then say that uh, maybe it's not a good way to have a profit. Anyway, uh, uh, one well, a lot of solution to this problem uh, should be political and legal, but uh, uh, I think it's also important to, to run a, a technical solution to try in parallel, because uh, if uh, one solution is to get away with the social network, that's not a really a good solution. On the other hand, uh, free software has been offering us a, a technical solution for uh, quite uh, a long time. Uh, there have been uh, federated and self-hostable uh, uh, server software for, um, since uh, 2008 at least. Uh, one of the first uh, was ident Identica, uh, of course if one does not count email or as a as a federate, as a social network but that's not usually considered uh, as one um anyway uh, with uh, this kind of uh, software uh, you could have uh, the social advantages or uh, of uh, federate of social networks uh, you could talk with people uh, around the world, uh, interact with them, uh, share cat pictures with them and uh, everything else uh, without the problems uh, involved uh, in the um, centralized uh, world. Uh, everybody could run their own uh, server and uh, control uh, uh, what data got collected and then uh, each server talk with every other server around the uh, on the internet uh, and um, one could interact uh, with uh, with everybody else. Uh, another such problem was uh, one early project was uh, Friendica, which uh, was basically something inspired by Facebook. As a, uh, it had uh, it as because it's uh, still uh, alive. The look of and feel of Facebook, while Identica was more um, based on uh, microblogging, uh, like Twitter, and uh, they existed. Uh, then came also Diaspora in 2010. They were a, they started to to work, and they were a great place uh, to hang around uh, with people and talk about. Uh, federated social networks or maybe a bit about free software. Uh, basically they were used by a very small number of people and they were uh, all enthusi enthusiastic about uh, federated social networks. Uh, one big problem uh, is that of um, uh, having a uh, enough uh, user and overcome the network effort uh, the network effect of other platform uh, this took uh, quite a long while uh, thankfully uh, well, the, the centralized social networks actually helped some of those uh, uh, decided to change their policies and uh, stop allowing contents that had been allowed on them for uh, quite a while. Uh, other showed um, that uh, the emphasis uh, on uh, trying to let people read more and more content uh, done in a way that um, gave them more uh, visibility to content that were uh, controversial and uh, made people uh, angry basically uh, meant that <coughs> reading social network uh, was uh, not so good an um, uh, an activity for one's mental health, so people try to look around for alternatives. 
And uh, in the meanwhile, also Mastodon happen, happened. Mastodon is uh, another uh, uh, platform uh, also based on uh, microblogging. Uh, it happened at the just the right time and with just the right amount of um, user friendliness that it started to collect uh, all those people who had been um, trying to look for uh, for an alternative to other social networks and uh, this way uh, it gained uh, users and most importantly it gained the users that weren't uh, uh, those uh, bunch of nerds uh, who loved the free software and uh, federated social networks <coughs> in the beginning uh, it is still currently not uh, the place to go to meet uh, your high school fr friends because they probably aren't there but it is now it is a good place to meet new people who are interested in most the topics uh, one can think about. Uh, I have been on uh, the Federated Social Network for quite a few years when it was uh, something just for nails and I was happy there but it was pretty limited. Uh, on Mastodon, I, one day I stumbled on somebody who was, uh, was posting mostly about also about soccer. Uh, this is something that I would never ever ex expected on the old uh, Fendica, for example, because uh, well, it was it's not really a topic that interests uh, most nerds. And this is great. This is this means that uh, I can start telling my family maybe, uh, oh, you want to see people on the federated on the social network you want to follow me on the social network well you can find me here and you can also find the other people who talk about uh, say knitting which is something uh, that I follow a lot of people that talk about or uh, other other topics that are not necessarily uh, for software related uh, and that not everybody is interested in. Also, the old uh, social network had uh, another quite big issue. Uh, I mentioned that there was uh, Identica, there was Friendica, there was uh, Diaspora, and none of them talk uh, with each other, except for Friendica, which tried to talk a, bit, a little bit with everybody, but it didn't always work. Another thing happened lately, and that is that in uh, 2018, uh, the World Wide Web Consortium released uh, the Activity Pub standard. Uh, it was uh, born uh, out of other uh, uh, protocols, but uh, and it is not perfect, but it works and uh, it is uh, one standard that uh, everybody can collect uh, around mm. it means that uh, nowadays while, while uh, in the past you had every project uh, with uh, their own uh, standard uh, talking with just the project in uh, especially in uh, summer 2018 there was a great uh, quite a big boom of uh, new projects based around activity pub also because uh, new projects could uh, interoperate with other projects from the start so um, everybody could use uh, the number of users of Mastodon in order to get um, access to users even if there were a tiny experimental project that were trying to do something new with uh, with social networks and they wouldn't have been able to attract the uh, users uh, other, in other ways uh, at that time it was called the summer of activity pub and uh, it saw the birth of mostly uh, 
platform for specific use cases like Pixelpad for pictures, Peertube for videos, uh, and um, other smaller platforms that are still uh, very wide, widespread for blogging. Uh, there is an effort, effort to make um, a platform for um, meetings to to coordinate meetings, which is still not uh, not ready, but uh, it's been worked worked upon. And um, this way, uh, things started to grow. The, the Federated Social Network wasn't just uh, a microblogging platform uh, used by a few people. It's starting to be something quite big and useful. Uh, it needs to. It has a. There is a danger. Uh, this danger is that uh, the most uh, easy way to get into the federated social network is to join one of the big instances. Uh, mostly, they are um, uh, Mastodon instances. And uh, that is a problem because that means that uh, the people who control those uh, can start to control the network. In order for um, the federated social network to work, it is important that um, uh, people can start running small servers for uh, just a few people. Uh, of course, uh, it's not reasonable reasonable to think that everybody will self-host their own, uh, their own uh, server but uh, one good way to um, uh, to work uh, is to have uh, small small uh, servers runs, run by a community for for that community especially small local communities uh, for example I'm on the server run by my local user group we have some maybe some 20 users uh, we know each other, uh, we can talk with the, with the server uh, maintainers uh, and we can help each other maintain it. Uh, this way we can... Um, well, we know that uh, the people who maintain the server can be trusted. Uh, we talk with them uh, often. Uh, they are they are friends. Uh, and uh, it's also small enough that uh, it's not easy to take control uh, over it. If there are many small servers with maybe 20 or even 100 uh, users per server, somebody who wants to control the network and needs to buy thousands or tens of thousands of servers and they're not going to, to be able to. If uh, everybody is uh, on uh, one big uh, Mastodon server uh, and uh, the person running it runs into money problems, uh, they could be both and uh, everybody could uh, move to another server, but uh, if it's another big server, uh, it's not going to fix the problem. To help people uh, running more servers, uh, it would be great uh, if the software for those servers was uh, in Debian because uh, running a server that uh, with software that is in Debian uh, is much easier on the sysadmins usually uh, but uh, all those pro projects are also um, uh, web applications basically and that means that packaging those uh, is hard. Uh, there are uh, requests for packages for a few projects. Uh, one is an intent package, but uh, it has been stopped. Workers on it has been stopped for a while. Uh, there are pages uh, of um, uh, JavaScript uh, libraries that need packaging uh, before, before the uh, the project can be packaged and they are quite a long page so if uh, more people would like uh, to help uh, that would be great uh, 
there is a wiki page and, uh, and an IRC channel for people who are interested in this job and none of them have seen much work in the, in the meanwhile because it's uh, not an easy thing to package uh, and uh, not an easy thing to maintain but from the sysadmin point of view it would, it would be quite great uh, thankfully there is another thing that Debian has been doing uh, about it uh, and uh, that has uh, been running uh, a number of those uh, services on, on instances uh, under the um, uh, debian.social domain for Debian contributors and uh, for this I will um, let uh, Rhonda talk because uh, she's actually part of the team doing so while uh, I'm not so, thank you, Rhonda. And I'll be here uh, after work for questions. Thank you. So, we have some questions, I guess. Uh, Rhonda, would, uh, would you like to address? Um, yeah. Yes, I think um, when I... Uh, continue with with my part and speaking about what the Debian social team does okay. um, we can sort of integrate it or maybe ask some questions through that and and have a combined Q&A afterwards uh, okay okay right uh, so you can start with your part yeah okay yeah. Um, thank you Valhalla for for your part uh, for the Debian Fediverse team, so to say. Um, these are two separate efforts that started from a different perspective. The uh, Fediverse team sort of started uh, to create the packaging effort. And we as the Debian social team uh, started to create services already um, to, to offer it. And it, it was quite interesting the timing that we chose we did not plan uh, for the pandemic but to some degree it's it, it's it's quite useful to have the services up and running already um, my personal background um, is I sort of dabbled uh, stumbled into uh, the Fediverse uh, one or about two years ago and sort of um, really got hooked up with what this activity pub protocol offers and how this works and 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 connects different platforms with different software and you can interact between all of them with just an account on one single instance on a server which offers um, possibility um, to, to interact. Um, most commonly known for the Fediverse is uh, Mastodon, which is a microblogging platform. But I personally chose to go with Pleroma instead, which is um, also a, a microblogging platform, so to say. It's a bit different than Mastodon, but if you're familiar with the Mastodon interface, it also offers the, the well-known Mastodon interface to use it there and, and interact uh, in the way um, all the uh, people that are used to Mastodon uh, works. There's certain bits that are different from Pleroma to, to, to Mastodon. Um, one of the most uh, obvious uh, or visible is that the Pleroma interface allows you to send longer text messages, but I think we, we sort of limited it down to the 500 that Mastodon offers too. Um, so there's that. Um, but uh, let's step back one, uh, let's go back one step. Uh, um, when you go to Debian Social, 
you're presented with this page and you are just having a link to, to the wiki page. On the wiki page, um, you find a short introdu introduction about what the Debian social team is and what the Debian social team does. It consists of Jonathan, Kyle and myself. Um, as admins, we are hanging out on the IRC channel, Debian-Social. And we are putting most of the stuff in into our Salsa project. We are trying to, to put more things there. But if you want to create, uh, uh, to have an account on the different social platforms that, that we offer, um, just follow the link uh, to the to create an, a ticket in, in, in Salsa for our team. Use the template that is available there um, and we will create uh, an account for you there. We go through Salsa accounts for that so that we can map the Salsa username to the usernames in the different services. Um, so I firstly mentioned Pleroma, um, which is uh, yeah mostly the thing that is is used quite intensely and and the 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 way into the Fediverse that most people know, which is kind of similar from from the way people use it to the. Uh, proprietary platform Twitter. Um, then we have an instance of PixelFed, uh, which is for image sharing. Um, people may consider it kind of similar to, um, to Instagram. Like you can upload pictures there, but you can also follow others um, from your pixel fed instance. And that's that's one of the big plus, uh, which which I find very, very interesting in the whole Fediverse thing, that you have an account on one platform and can follow people on other platforms, even if, it, if they're using different software. So it, it really creates this network of, of different islands which are sort of connected to each other uh, with their specific topic um, within the local timeline that they're using. Um, so there's that. Um, the next is PeerTube. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, it's sort of a video sharing platform and Jonathan uploaded all the, the videos from past Debcoms, um, which is really, really awesome um, to, to be able to, to see all the former Debcon videos uh, in a single place. So you have all the past, past videos from, from the previous Debcoms, they were in Brazil, but also, um, if I reload it, maybe there are already um, some some new videos uploaded. Yeah, you see some new shoutouts, uh, which people are adding to the Debcon floopy loop, which is played between the talks. Um, so watch out, there will be changes coming out up for that. Um, we also have White Freely, which is a sort of a blogging platform. There's also Plume, which is also some some regular web blog platform, um, which work quite, um, yeah, they're in quite early stage. I'm really trying out to, to dig around what services are there available, connected to ActivityPub and how to interact with, with them. Um, but 
We also have services we are not, which are not based on ActivityPub primarily, but which also makes sense to have under the Debian social umbrella. So we are offering a, a WordPress blog and Matrix is something that is really newly installed, which is quite, quite recent, but a lot of people already are hanging out in there. Um, so we sort of have an uh, Matrix service available to Debian contributors. Obviously, we also have a Jitsi instance, um, which helped uh, the, the, the work with that, um, hopefully helped the DebConf team with their Jitsi setup. So there was, was quite some exchange between that. Um, and all of it is sort of uh, considered to be in a beta testing state. So if you just want to figure out what, what all this Fediverse is about, um, join, join us, try it out, uh, find people. You can follow people on other instances on Mastodon, on the bigger Mastodon uh, once you can just read the local timeline and follow that. Um, there's a lot of lot of different uh, po po possibilities um, to join in here. Um, we're still in kind of an early state, but it's 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 kind of stable. Um, we are trying to to follow with the updates. Um, so that the communication between the different uh, software that is part of the Fediverse, because not all software is part of the Fediverse. For WordPress, uh, for instance, there is a, a plugin that might uh, make it possible to share WordPress blog posts and, and have the comments uh, for a blog post done through the Fediverse. This is usually the, the thing that Fediverse hooks in into other stuffs, like they have plugins for, for the comment sections on websites. And that's also to some degree part uh, of being uh, a, a way to, to play into the Fediverse. I think that was quite quickly, mostly a, a quick run through what we currently have. Uh, most of the stuff was already covered by Valhalla, thankfully. Um, so I just had to add to, to that part and, and was able to build on, on what she already presented. And so we have now room for some some questions okay uh, so uh, can the director show the etherpad yeah that's cool uh, so some of the questions are already answered answered on the etherpad so i'll quickly scroll through and uh, see which of them need to be answered yet so these are being answered and uh, uh, there's one question, like you can answer this one. Uh, what can we learn if anything from social media that hasn't been displayed by Facebook, etc., such as well-established bulletin boards and blogs? Um, I think um, for platforms like Facebook or Twitter or, or the likes, you have one central server and you have to come up with rules that sort of fit and accommodate to, to everyone. And people are still struggling a lot with that, um, which, which is a really pain for marginalized people and uh, people with a lot of privilege uh, don't understand often why something is considered hurtful to others. 
and with with such big networks they often also strive for they have to finance their stuff somehow and and uh, they want to try to to regain revenue and a lot of these come in through people with a lot of privilege and on the other hand also a lot of money so it it is usually very hard for for centralized servers to accommodate to the needs of marginalized groups within the fediverse it's fairly easy to set up your own instance i'm following a, a really really great instance from from a black community and the they are not willing to take a lot of shit uh, from from racists and uh, calling it out quite well and they have when they run their own server they have the possibility to block out all the bigots and and racists and and just say okay you are hosting right out hateful people either you deal with them um, and and uh, tell them that that behavior is not okay or your server is not going to seeing any information from our end anymore it's always a two-edged sword of course because on, on one hand you can say it creates this sort of echo chambers on the other hand it creates a huge amount of diversity and that's the aspect that I um, find very very fascinating um, that there is a lot of servers out there who really are um, supportive and, and helpful towards, uh, towards marginalized groups and, and helping and supporting them and there are some servers which are really, really um, um, putting hateful content under the so-called free speech uh, agenda and, and saying they, they are just standing for free speech and people uh, have every right to say their hateful content. But the reality is not everyone has the need to read all this hateful content so mm -hmm. it's 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 a useful thing to to be able to block out people that are working against your community's standards and through that it it's really really becoming a, a really great space on on many levels on the other hand for for the for for especially the black community and if you followed the news in in recent months um the black life matters movement and and the need um to to talk about uh racial bias and and all the thing hateful things that is coming from from white people to be able to to mention them um is something we might also continue in the diversity buff which is coming afterwards so i don't want to take too much away from that um, the fediverse is able to learn from from the big platforms that it's possible to have a diverse community and running it on different servers really really helps to to create smaller local communities and still having the possibility to interact with with other communities through the activity pub standard okay uh, so we'll take one last question so let's see uh, oh so all these have been answered so this one is uh yeah uh it's related to academia so the question says 
one place that is federated solution have taken off is in academia with authentication protocols like saml how do you might they fit into the fediverse so that's the question um can you copy the question into the chat for me to yeah i, I i'll do that i'll do that <laughs> or do you want to answer that maybe valhalla uh, i don't know about uh, the protocol so i don't know so it's, i have pasted the question in the chat you can see from the uh, chat also um i'm uh i don't know about the authentication protocol like summer um didn't dig too much into that part of the technical stuff i'm i'm just uh um personally i'm very interested in 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 the in the thing it creates for for a social movement but i also see that uh we create also through the different software that is part of the Fediverse, a diversity within the software that is communicating with each other. And through that, um, certain developments and different ideas are still uh, very much pushing forward and, and creating a momentum on top of all this Fediverse because it's to some degree, it's still, even though it's it's been a, a around since since a few years, it it's still something that feels new and shiny and, and, and attracts a lot of people with with a technical interest, and for that, um, obviously, it it has a a strong background in academia because uh, there is a lot to learn on on how the social interaction works in there, but also on the technical level, how the activity pub protocol evolves, because it's it's not just fixated. It, the different instances are all the developers bases from from Pleroma and from, from Mastodon and PixelFed are interacting with each other and, and trying to find new ways how to use this activity pub and, and base on it and, and expand on it and um, authentication protocols obviously are also parts that uh, a, a part that that comes into mind because when you put something out into the Fediverse you're still it's still your own you you still have the ownership or the authorship of, of it and uh, have to to work on that so all the the interlinked authentication or, or, or um, um, ownership and 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 through that uh, through through sharing is, is also an aspect that that sounds quite interesting to pursue yeah um, yeah so I'm, I'm really looking forward to to what's coming on what's what's coming up for for other people in the future on that <laughs> so i'm also excited about uh debian and debian social in the Freddyverse. so now we are almost done with the time but there are some questions uh i believe you can answer that them on the etherpad after the talk so i'll just conclude the talk and thank you elena and rhonda for the talk and subin for direction behind the camera so <laughs> See you on the on the site. Okay. Good day. Thank you. Thank you all.